So why launch a business or entrepreneurship brand now? Two reasons, really. One is, you know, I love, I'm a big music fan. I love movies, TV, like most of our fans. Um, but if I kind of had to go back to like why I went into the media business and why starting a content company as a storyteller, I mean, I like business a lot. I like entrepreneurship a lot. I like success meets failure. I like risk reward. I like fear and greed. I like those balancing forces that you kind of got to hit a wall and get through. Uh, not to brag or plug, but like my first book, Course to Success, was all about how other people hit a wall or failing and then they came back. My second book on Alexander the Great was like leadership management and like getting a bunch of dudes to go around thousands of kilometers and kill other people basically. Um, so <clears throat> I've always been driven by that and I actually think that like looking at business, uh, you know, kind of like looking at startups and companies the way we look at sports teams and looking at executives and entrepreneurs the way we look at athletes and, uh, uh, and artists is like an interesting take. Uh, so that's one. Um, <clears throat> two, you know, like last year you read a lot about like burnout amongst YouTube creators. Mm. So, <clears throat> you know, I mean, whether or not like I or you are a creator in the, in the sense of uh, YouTube, we're different, right? But I mean, I don't have the same pressures, or we don't have the same pressures that a lot of YouTubers did in terms of like coming up with more videos. Like we could create 50 videos a day if we wanted to. Uh, one of the reasons why I launched Watch Mojo and not Watch Ash or Ash Mojo, like who the hell would want that? But was because I actually knew that like creativity has a shelf life, and it's really hard to keep the hits coming, right? So, but the same things that creators go through with regards to Copyright, DMCA, content ID, demonetization, managing other creatives, <clears throat> and just the landscape. Yeah, I kind of experienced them myself throughout the last year. And as much as in many ways we had our greatest year, it was a kind of a hard year as well, just also managing what is relatively a young workforce. We also recruited a lot of senior execs. So I kind of got to a point where I said, like, I can out Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins, and be really zen and, like, positive. But I kind of realized that I was at a point in my life, I just turned 40, that I said, Watch Mojo, in terms of entertainment, should just keep doing what it does. But I really like entrepreneurship, and I didn't really have, <clears throat> sorry, I didn't really have an outlet anymore, short of wanting to write a book. And so I kind of started always dabbling, saying, you know, if I had to write another book, which I want to, it's called Context is King. And the idea is, like, content in a given distribution, that gives it a different context. So I started to the dabble. The medium is the message kind of thing? Yeah. There you go. Exactly. So as I start to kind of, like, all these stars align, I kind of said, you know what, the same way that I started Watch Mojo, kind of reluctantly became an entrepreneur and reluctantly kind of swerved into top tens because I liked that and I was like, that's the kind of content I would watch. I just got to a point that I said, you're now making excuses for not launching this. Nothing really ever is a perfect time. Just do it. So we're launching Context TV. There you go. Is <clears throat> everyone an entrepreneur? Uh, honestly, no. Uh, I think everybody has to be able to sell and sell themselves, uh, even if not everybody is technically a salesperson. I do think that like you got to be in the business of selling. You got to sell your idea, yourself, et cetera, et cetera, your vision. I think there's this big misnomer that everybody is an entrepreneur. I think everybody has to be entrepreneurial in the 21st century. Meaning, if you work as an executive or an employee somewhere, you still have to kind of think on your feet and kind of push your ideas and find a way to solve problems and. Oftentimes, do everything from the idea to like the execution. Two, I think we don't live in an era where people work at, I mean, Watch Mojo is an exception. You and I have been working together for 13 years. There's so many people who've been working here for like close to 10 years now. It's a bit of an anomaly, but I feel people don't really work any, anymore at one place forever. Yeah. I think we're in an era between the side hustles and the gig economy where, yeah, I think everybody has to be entrepreneurial, but there's no real playbook. You know, there's a lot of cliches. There's a lot of like extremes hustle porn, everybody's an entrepreneur. The reality is, throughout the, 19, uh, the 20th century, there was like this kind of school of management where we kind of like broke down corporations, organizational behavior, what's an executive, what's a manager, motivation, leadership, and all that. We haven't actually done that with entrepreneurship, even though entrepreneurship has been around forever. So Context TV is kind of like, if you think about it, it's kind of like life is not really uh, two ends of the spectrum. I kind of view it as like there's three forces. There's work, life, and play. So what we're going to be doing is putting context, uh, work in the context of your life. And like reminding people that like work is a means to an end, and that end is to kind of live a fulfilled life and balanced life. And you're never going to be 50-50%. It's like us. Like we, we work together. 
Sometimes the communication is never going to be 50-50. Sometimes I might say something that upsets you and I may not be aware of it. You might kind of hint at it. Then I got to pick up on that cue. Same thing in a relationship with a significant other. So it's kind of like a very different take on business and entrepreneurship. That's not just about stock prices and market share. It's really more about like the human The human side, yes, yeah. as I say. Um, do you think that the typical WatchMojo <clears throat> subscriber or why will they care? Do you think they'll care and why will they care? That's a great question. So, you know, if like on YouTube, it's all about going deeper and super serving your audience. So to be honest with you, I think like when we launched Travels, uh, sorry, when we launched Mojo Plays, that was like kind of super serving that audience. I also fundamentally believe that you got to diversify and go wide as well. So Travels was kind of more of a go wide approach. Context TV is absolutely more of a go wide. But that being said, if you think about it, if 30, 40 years ago you thought of like in pop culture and in movies, TV shows, how many business shows would you name? Wall Street, Wolf of Wall Street, not that many, right? In the last few years alone, if you just think of Wolf of Wall Street, Social Network, Billions, Mad Men, Silicon Valley. Even like reality shows like Shark Tank. Shark, Shark Tank, Tank. yeah. Shaquille O'Neal's an entrepreneur. Ashton Kutcher is an investor entrepreneur. So I think entrepreneurship has really changed. 20 years ago, you might your parents wanted you to be a doctor or lawyer. Even when I'm 40 now, when I finished school 20 years ago, you wanted to be maybe a doctor, a lawyer, a hedge fund manager, an investment banker. Yeah, but when the bottom fell out, everybody <clears throat> has to find their own way. Yeah. yeah, but it's also, it's different. Now, <clears throat> the Mark Zuckerbergs who drop out of school, not that I'm encouraging that, but those who kind of want to do their own thing and technology has changed, you could launch your business. Tech is everywhere. So with, the, with tech, there's less barriers to entry. Also more barriers to entry in other ways. But so long story short, I think there's a much bigger... And that's the point. There's a much, much bigger percentage of the Watch Mojo subscribers and viewers that we reach who maybe go to Watch Mojo. They could be 35 after a long day. It's their escapism. It's their you know shelter from reality. They go back down the nostalgia path and watch top 10 Transformers, or they'll watch top 10 Game of Thrones moments. So we will be kind of saying, hey, there's this other thing called Context TV check it out and they may kind of be like, hey, am I at a moment in life when I want to pursue entrepreneurship? But also you could be a 16 year old gamer and you don't even know yet that you are potentially an entrepreneur. And what this does is it gives you a playbook, right? There's no real playbook for entrepreneurs really in my opinion. Uh, so I think it'll be a bigger proportion than we think, but admittedly, this is a brand new thing. It's a brave new world. Who do you see as the typical viewer for Context TV? So yeah, I think it's probably uh, young uh, viewers who probably have entrepreneurial tendencies anyway, mm. who probably did not need a Context TV, but that Context TV will help them, you know, kind of avoid some of the mistakes and pitfalls that a lot of young entrepreneurs make. I think too, it's a lot of intrapreneurs, so people within organizations who are definitely entrepreneurial, but they're still doing it within the confines of an existing organization. I think it's also a lot of <clears throat> older, and by older, I mean, it could be 27, 28, but it could also be 47. I think it's also a lot of older viewers who kind of have a lot of experience who are like, there's a word for it, which is not necessarily the nicest. It's like a wantrepreneur, somebody that's been thinking and desiring to be an entrepreneur, but never taken the leap of faith. And what this does is it kind of will give you kind of a framework of like, is this the time? Am I ready for this? And also, I fundamentally don't think everybody should be an entrepreneur. And I think you should really think about that. So it does kind of give you a little bit of a soul-searching gut check to be like, do you really understand what an entrepreneurship is, uh, entrepreneur is? Do you know the amount of like obstacles and rejection and naysayers and ridicule you know that you have to put up with? You've heard me say this. Like when we started, it was like, hey, good luck with that business, pal. Then a few years later, it's like, hey, I always believed in you, buddy. And I'm like, I don't, I don't recall that. But so <clears throat> I think it's just like a very, very different approach to. Uh, business and entrepreneurship. So what can audiences expect, at least at start? <clears throat> so great question. So, I mean, clearly I've very, been very fortunate to have a lot of experience, uh, great network. So I'll be channeling, funneling some of that because when I talk to younger entrepreneurs or executives, they're generally like send me follow-up notes or like, thank you, that was really helpful. So it's kind of like I want to channel that in a more efficient way. So one is personal experiences will be in there. Two, in terms of the reality is right now, you know, you're on LinkedIn and everybody's like a life coach or like public speaker. And now that's setting aside the ridicule aspect, which I'm not ridiculing them. I'm just saying there are a lot of great voices and there are a lot of great perspectives. 
And the same way that Watch Mojo curated a lot of content and gave you lists that kind of showed you other things, I think part of it is I do want to highlight others that I think have a great perspective on a given thing or another, whether it's a you know, skill like sales or whether it's like a thing like coming up with product market fit. But it'll also be a melange, right? From, from the get-go, the same way that Watch Mojo had you on camera, me on camera, and eventually it was more clips, it'll be a bit more of a hybrid at the get-go, where some of it, it will be hosted, some of it you'll see a Q&A. A lot of it will also leverage and you know, deploy what we do best, which is take a lot of longer form content and kind of make it into snackable, uh, you know, highly visually rich videos. So it'll be a little bit of things that are work advice, play advice, life advice, and it'll kind of touch on the past, meaning case studies and bios and profiles. It'll also give you a lot of tips and trends for the future. But where it's a bit different is, and I don't say this in a bad way, a lot of business and entrepreneurship publications are written by columnists, journalists, who are ultimately have this kind of cynical side. <clears throat> I'm not saying they're snarky, <clears throat> sorry. But so what I wanna do is I kind of, again, I wanna talk about these organizations like sports teams. I wanna show that passion. Uh, it, when you talk about executives, it's very easy, or entrepreneurs, it's very easy to write them off and ridicule them when they're down and then when they're up, kind of praise them. So I kind of want to talk about it through the lens of an entrepreneur. Even when you talk about failure, it's really important to, not all about embrace failure, embrace failure, but it's very important to maybe explain why somebody did something instead of just kind of like laughing and kicking them when they're down. All right, well, uh, I guess we'll look out for that soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.